There we go. What's up, everybody? Um, I was gonna do a video, but I don't have time. So I kind of figured out, pump out a live, and I'm gonna do this just in case we have any questions. The thing about this is everybody, um, everybody know how to, everybody know how to prune. Where my water at? There it go. I'm gonna need some of that. Hold on, fam. we doing everybody so I see that banana plant yeah she about to bounce back uh bless Gardner I sent you an email I'm gonna have to find it because it's literally hundreds of them uh led st. Louis Missouri. hey Vicky hey Angela Locke how you doing <laughs> Lord led that kills me um <laughs> how you doing uh love lace um, thank you for everything you do. Thank you so much. I'm trying. I'm trying my best. Okay. I'm going to get right into it because I don't want the video to be too, too long, okay? Number one, I know I'm in the south. I'm in uh, uh, zone 8A. So everything here is blooming. I got peach trees blooming right here. I don't know if you could, I can zoom in. Yeah. There's my Saturn peach tree blooming. Just to show you a quick quick snippet okay all my plum trees and peach trees back there blooming in containers i got um what is it the uh the pluot splash and the other one i can't remember what it is but um everything is here blooming okay i got apple trees blooming like this one the one in the thumbnail if the thumbnail showed up let me let me zoom that back out of my nose hole this is my Dorset Golden apple tree. This is either my Dorset Golden or my uh, Anna Anna apple. I'm not sure which one it is. I I got the task confused a long time ago. Either this is this is either the Dorset Golden and the one inside the coop is the Anna or vice versa. But anyway, this is what I want to talk to you guys about. Um, I know we we doing a whole prepping and we getting ready. Remember, remember, getting your food together and raising your own food is hey, Miss Finance, is part of your prep. Growing your own food—that's where we start all this at, okay? Because you can't save food if you don't got food. Uh, you just pruned your trees, Car uh, Carla Roger. Hello, all. Just pruned my trees yesterday. Lord, don't tell me I did it wrong. No. I'm not going to say you did it wrong, but I've been getting a lot of emails asking people asking me when should they prune a tree? Should it be pruned in the fall, the winter, the summer? And they asked me, um, how should they prune it? How do they prune a peach? How do they prune an apple? How do they prune a plum? I'm going to tell you how I do it. To me, there is no how do you do it. It's, it's how I do it. To me, is no set way. They fighting like crazy. You need to, you need to think about a few things, okay? The world is in a a, 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 a weird way right now, right? Uh, let me see. Can I edit your stream down smaller video for better consumption of content? I can send it to. Okay, Mount Bayou. I I don't know what you asking or telling me. Live stream down to a smaller video for better consumption of content i can send it to you okay um all right just email me or something okay um no it's not too late to spray them if they're blooming it's too late to spray them even with neem oil like i'm i spray mine once and it keep raining so i don't know if it's going to do any good because everything here on my land is blooming everything so 
I'm here to tell you today, everything is crazy in the world. You know that. We ain't getting into that side of the prepping and staying prepared. We're getting into the financial part of it. The financial part of it is glad Miss Finance is here. That's my financial, my financial advisor. Uh, the financial part of it is how many people have pruned their trees already? That's, that's, let me ask that before I go, before I get going. How many people have pruned their trees, blueberries, raspberries, blackberries? I don't care what you got. How many people have done it? All right, Morris, Rambo, uh, Hold on. Can y'all, everything okay? Okay. My Wi-Fi, I should have opened this dog on window. My Wi-Fi thing is right here, I don't know. These lead, lead windows don't let nothing come through, a signal or nothing. Okay, I'm gonna say this, all right? If I start jumping, I'ma keep looking at the screen, so don't think I got a tick. I'ma keep looking at the screen so I don't, I don't lock up because i really need to let you guys know this if for all the people that have already pruned your fruit trees hey babe can you pick the pick the wi-fi up and open the window i'm sorry i didn't mean to scare you she thought i done had a passed out of something um for all the people that have uh you lost your job you uh in between jobs you're laid off all of that stuff part of your part of your gardening game comes into play here now i'm gonna show you another part of the game that i do to help sustain myself i just don't work for another man i work for myself too you pruned in the winter you know why i never prune in the spring and i i never prune um like in the fall in the winter because you can't make no money off that i mean you can but it's risky okay for instance, what would you rather me sell you? What would you rather me sell you? A stick, a ball-headed stick, or a tree in a pot? A lot of people get a little disappointed, even when you know your, your tree is coming from a reputable, great nursery like Isons or something like that. When you get that stick in the mail, you feel like, man, 50 bucks for this, right? Okay, everybody would prefer a tree in a pot. So that's where I prefer to sell. When people say, can I get a cutting? Can I get a cutting? I really don't like selling cuttings because they they always send me pictures and say, I think it's dead. I can't control that. So the best part is when you're about, I'm going to get right into the gravy here, okay? When you're about to prune your tree, don't just go pulling out your snippers. Don't go pulling out your snippers and going to town. Clip, 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 clip. You watch about 20 videos, and he said do it like this. Clip apples need to be cut like this. Plums and peaches need to be cut like this. Snip, snippity, root. Don't do that. Even if you're financially comfortable, you can make yourself even more financially comfortable by before you pull out these, okay, you need to do an air layer. So every single year, I don't just up and start pruning stuff for no reason. Because there are certain things, when I look at my trees, I look at my trees to be not just productive, but profitable. I know, I know it's a little, sound a little crazy. That's right, with the chili dog method. I look for my trees, and I'm going to show you a prime example of why I haven't pruned this apple tree in like two years. I'm going to show you why. I, I got beavers here, so low riding branches don't work for me. The beavers will come and eat them up. So I'm gonna get right into this and show you something, all right? All right, this, here we, this is my uh, Anna, we gonna call it the Anna Apple, so I don't gotta keep forgetting the name. This is either the Anna or the Dorset, whatever. I'm gonna take this cage off and we gonna get right into it. I'm going to show you this live. We live and direct, and I hope the Wi-Fi don't cut out. I'm going to take my beaver cage off so you can see this big baby in all her glory. Look at how sweet she is. She's beautiful, too. All these fruit blooms. Now, 
this is what I want to show you. Now look at all of this fruit going to come. All these apple blooms and all the other apple trees behind me is blooming. Now do you see these branches all the way down here? The graph union is here. So it's above the graph union. So uh, this tree, this one, all of this tree, all of these trees are part of the Anna apple. I don't know what the graph union is, okay? What the graph, the rootstock is. But this is Anna apple and I can prove it. Look, you can see the blooms right here. It's blooming right here. So family, I left this down here so I can show you something. And I, I left this down here because I, this is where I make my money. This is my, this is my job here because I'm gonna show you something. Here's one tree, two trees, three trees, four trees, five trees. Hey, hey, hey! I'm gonna eat you suckers. I keep telling people y'all quiet and you over here making all that dang on noise like we in the hood. Call the police. Got me talking to animals, y'all. I feel like Dr. Doolittle. I'm sorry. I'm sorry about that. So anyway. <laughs> anyway. This is part. They is tripping. Yeah, I just brought them some. Man, they ate it so fast. Bring them some more, would you please, if you can. Put your little pretty boots on. Because I'm going to fry one of these mugs, man. I'm trying to do a video and people looking. I keep telling them how good and quiet my chickens is. And that's when they act up. Just like kids when people is over to the house. Okay. Sorry. But this is that homesteading thing we all be keep talking about. Stuff ain't as cute and always as picture perfect as we make it in these videos. This is live and you seeing it straight out of the... That's right. Burned by the hot sauce. Okay. So, what I was trying to tell you guys before I was rudely interrupted. All of these are trees that I'm going to sell. This is all good graph wood. Either graph wood where I'm going to take... I'm going to take this whole branch here. See this branch? And I'm going to graft it onto another tree so it can pollinate each other. Thank you, honey. Yeah, they spread it all down too. So spread it down a little further because they, they banging on wax, man. It's like bloods and crips. So See, Lady Lay had to come out in her pajamas. They tripping. Yeah, throw, throw it over there. Okay. Sorry. Back to what I was saying. You see the back scene going. She throw the old head of cabbage in there. There you go. So, I'm going to quickly do a chili dog method. And it's not going to be an hour video today. Everybody say, hey, Lady Lay. Straight up. We just going to go ahead and knock this out. Because I'm going to show you. I don't prune my trees like this. <laughs> it's all residential income. Exactly. Hey, babe. It's all photo bomb in your pretty boots. You just want to show off your little boots. So, yeah, it's squishy out here. So, back to action. We're going to literally get this tree up and going right now. This way you can make some profit Right now, you might be in between incomes, okay? And if you ain't in between incomes, this is more money that you could save up, put to the side, whatever you want to do with it for your business venture. Your tree will not just feed you, it will feed you. Apples won't fix your roof. You can grow all the apples and all the plums and peaches you want to, but if your roof is leaking or your car is broke, an apple ain't going to do anything for those situations selling those apples or selling part of those trees the income from that will fix those situations so you'll be eating and eating 
all at the same time. Because so, a, a lot of people, they forget that one little piece that, man, it's other ways to profit from your tree. And every time you go to pruning, you're throwing money away. Because, come on now, look at this tree. I'm showing you this tree now. Tell me, I know it's going to be a bunch of emails like, Leah, can I get a piece of that tree? Can I get a piece of that tree? As good as blooming like this, you know it's fertile. You know what it is. Look where it's at, right next to a chicken coop. All it's getting is chicken poop. So we're going to get right into this. I'm going to show you, and I'm going to do it fast. I'm not going to be now... Get ready for a couple of these videos, y'all, because I'm going to be doing this. I'm going to take you around the land with me, and I'm going to do this to all of my trees. I'm not going to do it all on camera, but this is what I do to all of my trees every year, and then I sell those trees off and make me extra income so I can survive because we don't make as much money as y'all think we do, okay? You got to get your hustle on. That's, that's in my blood. So straight out, straight out the gate, I'm going to get my bag filled up right off the rip. I think I left my foil in the house. I did. Fill your bag up with some soil. I don't care what kind of soil. It don't matter if it's cocoa core or whatever. It don't matter. It could be something off, right out the ground. I just was trying to make it easy, but I'm telling you, I done did a little bit of everything in a pinch. Put that in a, in a bag. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bring you down and zoom in right on that branch because that's where we're about to get down. Now, I'm going to put a little water in there. Wet that up. Get that water all gooey in there like that. All right. Let me zoom you all out. I know this is crazy. But I was like, I got to do this. I got a lot of trees to do, and I got to work this week. So today I'm off. I'm still building chicken coops. I'm doing all kind of crazy stuff. So I kind of figured I would show y'all while I'm doing it. Now, you halfway zip that up to the end, and you squeeze that water out of there. Squeeze as much water out of there as you can. It's like that. Get that out. You don't want it wet, 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 wet. <laughs> <laughs> Jennifer, <laughs> don't get me started on that last night. You don't want it. Okay, that's how you want it. Like Play-Doh, okay? Set that to the side. We're going to come on in here. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to change this, the angle of this camera so y'all can see what I'm doing. And I can see what I'm doing without keep having. I can look at the screen. God, it's so muddy out here. That I can't even put my camera down. Okay, here we go. Now y'all can see what I'm doing and I can see what y'all saying all at the same time. So family, I'm not going to get too complicated. This tree here, I'm going to leave. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do this right in here, but I'm not going to do that today. I'm going to do that off camera. We're going to take this tree right here. Yeah, Jennifer, whoever was in the live last night. Woo, Jennifer. <laughs> so you take your knife. Let me see, it's slipping too. Even though it's supposed to get down and cold, when you see your trees doing this, the, the sap is running. So it's gonna be okay, you're gonna be all right. Just keep it protected. You don't gotta cut no big old giant piece. Go around a circle, throw that thing in a circle. Y'all seen this done a million times. Now you seeing me do it. I don't even want to be that low. I'm going to come up a little bit. And no, it ain't got to be pretty, y'all. That's the part where people keep thinking that everything got to be so pretty and precise. You should see me out here with half this stuff the way I do stuff. Okay. All right. I'm going to cut that right there. Oh, y'all can't hardly even see it, can you? There we go. I'm going to cut that down the middle like that. Y'all, y'all, excuse my nails. I've been eating blood oranges. Okay. Now you're going to carve that right down to that other one we just started right there. See how that's running? I don't want that to run too far. Now, if it was summertime, this would peel right off. 
but it's still spring. So it's it's going to kind of be acting a little funky, okay? So all I'm doing is scraping that bark off all the way around. So it's a little more difficult because it's still early in the year. But I got to get this done. Some stuff you got to do, family, because you don't know when you're going to have time to do it again. Like, you don't know if the weather is going to act right. You don't know what's going to, your health going to act right. You just don't know. So you got to get as much done as you can when you can. Now, all we're going to do, and I, once I show you the size of this tree, how big it's about to be, this is going to be a whole tree. Now, you scrape that down to the white meat. You see the difference here? Look. See how light that is? And that's still green and brown. You want everything white like that. You scrape that down to the knuckle. All of it. All the way around. Okay, and the only reason I'm I'm trying to do this on camera and it's never pretty. You don't want no green, none, not even no brown. You want to get down to that white meat right there. Okay. I'm going to get up out this chair without falling in this mud and get this backside too. I'm gonna do this side too. All of this, you gotta get it all. Because if you leave a bridge, if you leave even one bridge, this tree won't put out no roots because it's still getting uh, sustenance from the main bark of the tree. And it will start growing and you will be looking crazy. You'll just have an ugly tree. Nothing happened. You scrape that all the way, just like that. Okay? All right, we good. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. White meat a la mode. Now, you see this piece I missed? See that? Can you see the difference before I touch it? See that piece right there, that strip? It's easier to see it in the camera. See that? Get that off of there. That was a long strip, too. That would have ruined me. All right. Don't be scared to get in there. Rough it up a little bit. I don't care what you use. A lot of people say, I don't. I want to do it organic and stuff. You can do whatever you want to do. I'm showing you what I do, and I'm showing you what works for me. You can do whatever you want to do. I'm showing you straight up. No junk. Wet your fingertips. Put a little hormone powder on there. Rooting hormone. Yeah, people going to say, oh, you shouldn't be touching that. Well, <laughs> come on now. I'm just showing you straight up. Okay? No frills, no thrills. This is straight up. How we gonna do it? You can use whatever you feel you need to use to make yourself feel better about saving the world, whatever. Okay, boom. We got the hormone powder on there. Now, chili dog time. I'ma back it up a little bit. Back it up, chili dog, squeeze that. Hold on. All right, we're going to squeeze that real tight again. See some more residuals, some water. Get the rest of this water out. I don't want this. It stay wet enough. But now the tree keeps making me think somebody behind me trying to get my wallet. All right. Move that around there like that. See that? Just like that. Zip that back closed. All right, now family, chili dog time. Take your knife, 
and you cut that right down the middle like that, make that chili dog scream, just like that, okay? I do this every year, I got tons of videos on it, and y'all see the results, cause half of y'all done bought the trees from me. All right, now let's go back down. Soil, soil is in the bag, just plain old soil, potting soil, don't matter what you got. Just being straight out of Compton. What kind of knife, it don't matter. None of that stuff matters, y'all. I'm just showing you straight up. It ain't no name brands or nothing. It ain't nothing got to be nothing. Now look. It's like a chili dog. You wrap that chili. You put that that dog in that bun. You wrap it around like that. And bring that bag back around the top. The lid. The flap. Bring that back around like that. And I normally use a string. I'm going to use a zip tie on it and make it quicker. I'm going to zip tie that sucker. Straight up. That's it. Zip tie that a couple times. Don't worry. When it's time, you're going to cut them off when you start seeing roots. Damn, phone. Man, I tell you, man, everything is going going sour right now. Okay, there we go. There we go. Sorry about that, y'all. Wait, let me get this little branch out. He, that's a whole nother tree. Come on out there, sucker. Now, you want that tight because you don't want that spinning around like that. Okay? So, you tighten them up. The roots is going to grow right in this bag. Just like that. Now I'm going to get this one up here. Even though it, it really ain't serving no purpose. I just want it out the way. Boom. Now, all we're going to do is wrap this with foil. Which I left in the house. I knew it was something I forgot. Okay. We're going to wrap that with foil so the sun don't get it. Or you can put a black, some black plastic around it. Anything that the sunlight ain't going to get it. So the roots, when they start growing, they think they're underground. And boom, you have a whole tree to sell. We would cut this, and I'm going to show you, like I keep showing you every year. Once the, we see roots in this, we're going to cut this right here at the base of the trunk. And watch how big the tree going to be. All of this is that tree that we just did. All of this. That's a whole nother tree. Do you see what I'm saying? So if my whole tree, I'm going to back all the way up, is this big. But the, that's the top that I'm pointing to right there. All of that is what we just did. That whole big branch down there. See that? Whole nother tree, family. So you could sell a tree that size at regular price. And it's going to have the exact, exact cloned DNA. So you're going to have my tree. Just like everybody that got a piece of Lillian, you have a piece of Lillian, not a seed. You have, you're growing what I grow on my land. So with this apple tree here, that's what that tree will be. When I sell it, they're going to be able to see this video and say, that's exactly what my tree is going to do. This, I've only had this tree for like two years. That's what my tree is going to do because I have a piece of this dude's tree. Okay. So that's all I wanted to show you. I didn't want to make it long. I just wanted to make it, you know, quick and easy. So family, <clears throat> I'm going to get, I'm going to just tell you like this. I'm going to come out here. Hope my Wi-Fi don't cut off. Before you go pruning your trees. Please think about it first. Think about it. Oh, oh, I got one more for you. Before you prune your trees, think about it because there's money to be made. And even if you're not interested in the financial standpoint of it, if you have a homestead or a large piece of land, instead of keep buying trees, you can multiply your one tree every year's time to prune. Now you get three and four more apples that you can plant somewhere else on your land. 
okay so it ain't even always about the money it's also you can spread your land so you don't have to keep paint well that's keeping money in your pocket too i guess that's financial too i'm gonna show you one other thing too all right this is something i was going to do a video about i ain't got time this is a uh ooh, a crab apple tree crab apples crab apples pollinate all apples I don't care if they're the flowering crab apples or the ones that give you the little sour apples. They pollinate every other kind of apple. So if you don't want to try to match what apple needs to be pollinated by what apple, buy a crab apple. You don't have to keep the whole tree. In a video coming up, and we're going to do it live too. I'm going to say maybe this Sunday, We're going if it's not raining. What we're going to do, I'm going to show you live grafting. And before that, I'm going to get you, I'm going to prep you and show you how to do it live while I'm in the house. We're going to all cut a piece of branch off of any kind of tree. And I'm going to show you how to do it. And then we're going to do it live together. What that's going to do is help you if you need a pollinator on your tree. Snip a piece off of this tree and grafted onto this tree you don't have to buy a whole nother tree if you know how to graft you can have two kinds of trees now that our wi-fi is fixed i'm gonna try to walk over here if i cut off i'm gonna come right back okay because i want to show you something special i try to do this every year my wi-fi always cut off but now that we got this new stuff i'm gonna see how it turns out so hold on to me okay i want to show you something real special I'm looking at my screen, seeing if I'm turning off yet. Ooh, so far, so good. All right, check this out. I have never been able to do this without it cutting off. Do you see this apple tree? This is an apple tree that I planted, I'm going to say maybe three years ago. It used to be no sound. Can everybody hear me? Okay, all right. So it's just you, brother. All right, so this used to be uh, the Wolf River apple tree. That base down there is the Wolf River apple tree. Now let me show you up close and personal what I uh, taught my son how to do. Do you see every one of these big branches have been cut here, here, there, Every branch has been cut. Every branch. Here, because I'm going to show you something up close. Now that we got Wi-Fi. Do you see this? This is where I showed and taught my son how to grab. So this is the Wolf River. But this is like a Granny Smith. On this one, this is the Wolf River. But where we cut it at, this is is a Dorset Golden. This is an Anna Apple. We grafted it on this side and that side. We came around here and we cut it. This is a Pink Lady. This is, I don't even know, because all the tags flew off. He didn't do that part right. I could go on and on. A uh, uh, Eichheimer and, I don't know, a Golden Delicious. And I think this is golden, delicious. But you see how that all looks like one whole tree now? The bigger it gets. Now watch this. Just to give you a little perspective, okay? This is me and this is my tree. I'm 5'9", I hope still. And that's my tree. So, what I'm telling you is, you can have one kind of apple tree. This is about eight or nine different apples on this one tree. When you go purchasing those multi-grafted trees, you're paying somebody for their skill set. Okay, not saying it's not worth it, because if you don't want to be bothered with it, pay for it. But if you know how to do this stuff yourself, you'll save yourself some money. 
So I show my son, because if something happened to me, I want him to be able to teach somebody else down the line in my family. All right? So I'm going to show you one more secret. Now, with this being able to pollinate all other apples, I'm going to take a brand. I purchased this on purpose. I don't plan on planting this tree. I'm going to take a branch off of each little branch and graft it to every apple tree that I have so it can get even more pollination. You got to use your head. Now, with the remaining tree, when I'm done with it, I'll sell it and get my money back. That's how this works. Now, here's something for everybody. Show of hands, how many people have purchased a billion trees and they ain't sure what to do with them yet? Don't lie to me, just come on. Everybody, because I've been watching y'all videos, so you can't lie. I've been watching everybody's videos. I've just been quiet. Y'all been purchasing a lot of trees at uh, the big box stores and stuff. I see it. And everybody like, I don't know what I'm, I can't. Somebody was in Broke Farmer 76 video and they said, I just hit Lowe's and I bought about six trees and they don't know what to do with them because they live in an apartment or townhouse or something. I get it. So you have plans, but you ain't quite sure, but you really don't really want to put them in a container. I got a solution for you, okay? I'm going to show you what I do, and then I'm going to show you the results. We're going to take this apple tree that I just showed you. I bought this to pollinate these apple trees, but I don't want to plant it. But in this little pot, if it stays in that pot, it's going to die. It's going to die because it's going to dry out because I'm not going to pay it no mind. I'm not going to be paying it no attention. Okay. So I'm going to show you what I do then I'm going to show you the results of what I do you get your shovel and you eeny meeny miny mow it I'm going to try to stay away from the water so the beavers don't get me we're going to eeny meeny miny mow it I ain't going to go that way though this is better you can see what I see alright I'm going to show you a way to hold over your tree until you can figure out what the heck you're going to do. Okay? All right. This is good a place of any right here. I don't know why I'm picking this spot. We just is. This is what we're going to do. What you want to do, family, is dig you a very shallow hole, maybe two inches. Maybe two inches. You don't even got to do that. You just want to break the, break the surface, get to some soil, okay? So all I'm doing is scraping off the side. That's all I care about. Look at all them worms. That's all I want to do. I don't want to dig a hole because I don't want this tree to live here. Okay? Y'all with me? Now, this is what I'm going to show you as my peach tree is in the background looking beautiful. Let me see. Did I put it back in my pocket? No. All right. So. This is what we're gonna do. You take this pot. Your tree gonna come in a pot like this, especially when you get them from the big box stores, right? Take you a knife. Then we're gonna get wicked. You literally cut that suck open at the bottom, the whole bottom, cut it off. Don't be shy. Don't worry about cutting the roots. It'll be fine. I promise you. If anything, you helping it. Cut the whole bottom off. Throw that away. Now, you have an exposed bottom. Whole bottom leaking, right? Now, the next thing you do, family. Let 
is put that sucker right here. Right there in that spot. You don't do nothing else. That's it. What you just did, you saved that tree where you can still be lazy and you can still keep trying to figure out what the heck you're going to do at the same time. That tree is going to last forever in that spot. Remember, I want you to remember something. When you put a tree, and this is the part that people, they talk about growing food and they talk about gardening, but um, some of the stuff we do in normal life is the same as gardening and planting trees. Like number one, um, when you put a tree in the ground, some people like to put them in containers. I have plenty of them in containers right here behind me. And tons in the greenhouse, tons over here on the side of the greenhouse, okay? Nothing wrong with containers. But it's the same thing as you just having a, a house plant, a potted plant. When you put that tree or plant in the ground, it's like a connection. You, It's like plugging up an electrical device inside your house. You just put your tree, which is the plug, into the socket, which is the earth. That's when that tree just takes on a life of its own. You, it don't need you no more. While you got it in these containers like a hamster in a doggone cage, you gotta feed it, you gotta water it, you gotta make sure it ain't dead. What's that smell? Oh no, where's Hammy? I can't find Hammy. Uh-oh, there he is, that's the smell. No difference. So when you plug that sucker into the ground, you set it free. You set your trees and plants free. That's why I prefer to have mine in the ground no matter what. So this is the results. I'm going to show you several results of doing exactly what I just showed you by temporarily putting your tree in the ground. Just like that. Don't take it out the pot, cut the bottom off. I'm going to show you. I'm so proud of this because this was the biggest, the biggest, most beautiful mistake I've ever done. Check it out. You see this tree? I set this free without even knowing I did it. This is an Elliott pecan tree. It lets off some of the nicest pecans. They small, but they sweet. Do you see where that is? I'm going to show you something about this tree and show you why it's so special to me. Look where it is. It's out here in my tropical circle, but now we done turned it into the garden. This used to be all banana plants and tropical plants and all kind of beautiful tropical trees. I got rid of that and turned it back into a garden. This tree is like in the middle of nowhere. You know why? Because I set this tree here so it wouldn't die. This tree was this thin. When the wind blows, it'll whip back and forth like that. This tree was no more than like a little leaf. I stuck it right there because I got it for like $5. or I don't even think it's that. Stuck it there because I didn't want it to die. Like if I was going to let it die, I should have left it at the store. I don't care how much it costs, right? Set it there. And I just hurried up and dug a quick hole and poked a whole bunch of holes under the bottom and left it alone and forgot about the doggone tree. All the tropical foliage covered it, right? So, right there, you know what happened? It started getting taller than my banana trees and everything else. Next thing I know, here's my Elliot pecan tree. It's a beast. That was only like two years ago. And now look, this thing giving me food already. That's what I'm talking about. So this was kind of a, a mistake. And if you've seen how fast I did it, I was cutting the grass when I did it. I just hurried up. Ah, I kept kicking it over. Ah, and I just jammed it in the ground, walked away. And here we go. Two years later, I'm getting pecans. They say you can't get pecans that soon. 
That too was a lie. They say you can't get um uh, avocados in South Carolina. Ours is blooming right here like crazy. All the leaves fell off, but look at them blooms. That's the Mexico La Grande avocado. Blooms all over the place. So, family, it's easy to get this stuff going. You can pull this off. Some of the stuff you got to use common sense, family. Common sense. Before you go pruning your trees, think about what can I do with it? What can I do with these pieces that I'm cutting off? Because it's, it's, it's more to it than I could do with this stuff. Hold on. Let me get copper squad on my words. We in 46 minutes now. Now I can talk to you, talk to you. Okay. Let me show, show my little plume, my little pluot. So, hey everybody, how y'all doing? If everybody's still here, I just had to run through all of that real quick because I wanted to show you what I do here on my island. I wanted to show you there's other ways to make money. There's, when you buy all of those trees at these discount prices and stuff, hang on to them. That's a way you ain't got to kill them. Now, here's another thing. You want to know something? I'm gonna show you one more trick. One more trick. My whole house is surrounded by water. Even up on the street, the lake wraps around the whole other side of my, my uh, neighborhood. So this water circle, circles me. That's why I call it my island. So everything here stays super wet. How many people got super wet soil? Super wet. If you got super wet soil, like me and i'm gonna show you how wet it is this is why lady led had those little beautiful little boots on i like you see that this is right in front of my sump pump watch this see that the only time that dries up is around june but the rest of this is just a soggy mess water just sits on my land. I'm gonna show you another soggy, soggy spot. Super soggy. Look at that. You see all that? That ain't going nowhere. Them is my tractor uh, tire spots. So, here we go. If you look closely, you see all of my trees on mounds. I don't really bury my whole tree. I make a mound of dirt, set the tree on top of it, and then pour soil on top of it so my roots can breathe. If you look at all of my trees, all of them do that. If you're on wet soil, this is what you have to do so your tree can survive. All of my trees are on mounds. Every last one of them. So I'm going to show you one more dope trick for wet soil or clay soil. Do you see this container? This container, look, it's out of line with those. Peach, 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 plum. Why is this one sitting here like, like stepchild? Because I cut the bottom out of this. Because it's so wet over here, I cut the bottom out. And this is how you make a raised bed for your tree without making a raised bed for your tree. The container costs $5. Cut the bottom out, fill it with soil, stick your tree in it. Now you're going to have roots all the way up here. It's another form of mounding. And the roots that can handle it and want to go down and get some water and nutrients, they're under there. I can't pick this tree up. It's there for good until it busts out of this container. Then I'll just make it all mound up and you'll be good. It's other ways to handle this stuff. Easier ways, okay? That's <laughs> raised bed tree. That way, if you got clay soil, terrible soil, rocks in your soil, this is a way you can still grow trees 
and get fruit, as you can see, I've been doing this for years, for years. I've proven it over and over again. So this is just for the newer people that just coming in and getting hip to me. This is what I do. And the people that have been with me all the years, you already know because you done seen some of the video. Hey, love notes. What's up, hands in the dirt? I, I'm running my mouth. I ain't seen nobody. How y'all doing? I figure since I'm in already 50 minutes, I might as well holler at y'all real quick. We're going. I'm going to be teaching you guys how to graft. If you don't want to learn, totally up to you. But for the people that want to learn to get more fruit, to get better pollination, to get several kinds of fruit on your land on one tree, because it's a lot of people that can only, hey, Frederick, a lot of people can only afford to have one tree because they don't have much land. So there you go. You can have apples, all kinds of different apples on one tree, one tree. You want different kinds of pears? One tree. I got a pear tree over here with a Bartlett, Moon Glow, uh, Orient, and a whole bunch of different Oriental pears on it. We did that. I, I think I showed you guys too. What zone are you in? Um, I'm in 8A. Uh, Keith said, I was just watching your air layering video before this video came on. Hey, that's scary, ain't it? <laughs> we about to get down because spring is here. Spring is here this year with a twist. What's up, uh, M. Mitchell? It's with a twist because we ain't just gardening this year. We gardening for survival now. So everything what we doing right now got to deal with the weather, hurricanes, tornadoes, earthquakes, eruptions, everything else. So we're gardening for real, for real now. All the practice stuff is over. That was years ago. Now all the stuff that you guys learned over these years, you better stop playing and put it to work because might, you might need it, okay? Do they taste like different types of apples when you put them all together? They are literally their own kind of tree. This is a pink lady apple. This is a Granny Smith. This one is red. This one is green. This one is yellow, golden, delicious. This one is a orange, a orange pippin. They're all their own apples just growing off of one trunk. It's, it's just kind of like your family. You know, your sister might look different than you. One of y'all might be light-skinned. One of y'all might be dark-skinned. Nobody look like daddy. That kind of stuff. It's no different. But it's all coming out of the same family trunk. Just totally different people to live there. That's all you do when you grab. Are you planting sweet potatoes? Yes, I will be coming up shortly. Hey, Vicky. Hey, when you order when you order your trees and they come and it's still cold outside, can you put them outside? Yes, yes, definitely. Your trees, it depends on what kind of trees you have too. Not citrus. But if you like apples, pears, peaches, plums, yes, they live out in the cold. Uh, when, when do you do the chili dog method? It depends on where you live. Like, it's spring here. I start, when I start seeing blooms and from, from the sap running in the trees all the way till fall, I've been doing, I do it every year. That's how I prune my trees. I don't just prune them once. I prune them all year by taking those cuttings, taking those air layers and selling them and giving them away to other people. Spread that DNA. Uh, let me see. Uh, you have to stick the same type of fruit when you're, when you're pruning. Listen, it, that part gets complicated, but keep it simple. All you do, apples to apples, pears to pears, plums to plums, peaches to peaches. I don't want to get into the other stuff because you'll get confused, trust me. Just stick with apples to apples, pears to pears, yada, yada, yada. Because there is some that can do it, don't. Just don't do it. Until you learn how to do the right way first. Can all trees use the chili dog method? Yes. Yes, they can. I've, I've chili dogged everything from peaches. I got all of those videos for you. Apples, peaches, plums, pears, everything. Uh... What's up, Nature Nine and family? How you doing, my friend? Good to see you. Uh, Sonia Trail says, I'm in lead. I'm struggling with my seedlings. But if push come to shove, I'll just hit up Lowe's home. There you go. Start over. Just start over. Even if it look like it ain't going to make it, start over. 
If you got the money, start over. Drop some seeds, like like uh, Miss Linda say, New Orleans Gardener. Drop some more seeds. Just don't stop. Uh, Carla Roger, my trees have been in a large bucket since last summer. If I cut the bottom out now and put the yard, put in the yard, as you did, it will delay fruiting. For see, see, that's that's what you gotta stop. Stop worrying about the fruit. Stop worrying about the fruit right now. Stop worrying about the fruit, trying to get fruit soon. You got a baby tree. If your tree is in a pot, it's a baby. That's like you trying to tell your child to go to your job and go to work, go pay the bills. And I'm only three years old. You stop, everybody stop trying to get fruit out of your baby tree. You see how big fruit trees really be? And people go by a tree and say, will I get fruit this year, Led? Man, stop it. That's not what you're in it for. Okay? We're in it for the long haul. That's why, listen, that's why the urgency. That's why I keep saying, please, all these OG gardeners keep saying, please grow some food. Please grow some fruit trees. Please get your garden started. The reason why we're saying that, so five years down the road, you will be coasting. You will start seeing that fruit. But if you never get started, you'll never get any fruit. Period. What's that, what's that, uh, that saying? You, you can't win if you don't play. Uh, forcing a three-year-old to be an adult. Yes, that's, it's the same thing. You know? And when you see a little baby tree spit out an apple and the apple is that big, it's like seeing your child play with a firearm that's don't you can't give me that you no you ain't supposed to have that you see your kid running through the house with a knife give me that you don't know what you're doing take that apple off that's why the apple look all demented okay like it needs some exorcism because that apple ain't supposed to come out yet take that apple off of there so that tree can grow let them roots grow okay for the most part, I let trees and nature do its thing. But you know when wrong is wrong. When that apple come out like this and you waiting for it to get bigger like it's going to turn pretty or something, it's not. It's going to get uglier. The bigger it get, this piece all big, the seeds is on the outside. I don't, I'm not eating it even if it grow. So stop it. Cut that little little booger off. So the tree and the roots can grow and develop instead of trying to force all of that energy into that sick little fruit. Can I leave my cherry tree in the container on concrete? Will it stop it from blooming? Don't even worry about it blooming. You just want to keep it alive. Don't care about it blooming. I just got through saying that. Stop worrying about it. Listen, what you're doing is unorthodox. So when you're, when you're, let me back up. Trees are not supposed to be in containers, family. Everybody that grow in containers seem to leave that out. Your trees are not supposed to be in containers by the rules and laws of nature. So why do we keep expecting these trees to perform like a tree that's in the ground where the roots can stretch. Remember something about roots. Roots on a tree is like a pack of wolves. They're under the ground hunting. They're hunting, looking for food, hunting, looking for nutrients, hunting, looking for a uh, 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 fungus, every mineral that they need, everything to produce sugar to make that fruit so you can eat, okay? Roots move, roots hunt just like we do. They need to spread out to hunt. That's why roots spread out. They no different than a pack of wolves. Okay? So when you contain them, it's like putting a man in prison. He can only eat when you feed him. He can only drink when you let him drink. He's confined and controlled and he's at the mercy of the warden, which is you. So when you put your tree in a container, you can't expect, you can't expect a person to grow in a cell. They're locked, they're chained up 
in the mind, in the body, they can't move around. They can't do everything they want to do. Your tree is no different. When you keep it in a container, stop expecting it to be as productive as a tree in the wild. It's never going to happen. Never. You will get some fruit. You will get some leaves. But you will have all kind of problems. The tree is going to not get that big. It's going to be stunning. If you keep getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger containers, yeah, because you're letting those roots grow. But if you're not, it's, it's not working. It's not working out for you. Okay. Uh, do you recommend bare root or potted when purchasing? I'm going to be honest with you. I, I really like bare root trees better. I do. Because it's... It reminds me of when I was a truck driver. My my uh, instructor said, who all know how to drive a stick? And I was like, oh, me, me. I thought I was going to be the man because I already knew how to drive a stick shift. You get to the back of the room. Huh? Go to the back of the room. You know why? He said, okay, you in the beginner's class. Everybody that don't know how to drive a stick shift, come with me. Me and a couple other fellas like, what? We know how to drive a stick shift. Now I'm learning how to drive a truck. That's a stick shift? No, you go to the back of the room. You want to know why? Because I was already mentally trained how to drive a stick shift in a truck or a car. I was already trained. That's not how you shift in a semi-truck. So, like he said, I was grinding gears like you wouldn't even believe. Because I'm thinking you got to hit those gears like you in a little uh, Honda Civic. No, you don't. And the people that's never drove a stick shift before was better than me because they were freshly trained. So with that being said, when those roots are in the middle of nowhere and they just hanging out like this, they have not been trained yet. They have not been trained to do anything like swirl around that pot and learn that pot. And they have not been fed anything so in that pot they got them little beans, they done fed them some fertilizer and you don't that tree has gotten used to that. But that tree, every one that I got that's a bare root, go crazy. Every last one of them. Will bleach leak into your... Okay. Will bleach leak into your soil kill your plants? Yes. Uh, hey, fam. How's everybody? Everybody good? Yeah, I was tearing that clutch up. Tearing it. Burn. You could smell him smoking like bacon. Uh, your tree in the ground will get compost tea every time it rains with compost under a tree. Correct. Uh, duck is unclean. I put two duck. I'm going to take that down because I'm not quite sure what that is, Dolphus, okay? I don't know what that was. I don't know what that was, bro. <laughs> Maybe I missed something. Uh, how your... How you're holding your hands is exactly how the bare roots look. Exactly. Just like that. That's what you want to see. But when you pull them out of that container and all them roots are swirling around that bucket and trying to bust through that bucket, you, that, you got a problem. You literally need to cut those roots and reset their memory. It's just going to take them a lot harder, believe it or not, in that bucket. It's going to take them a lot harder to be trained than a bare root tree. Uh, Crafty Mom said, I just put my lime in the ground. I'm so excited. I can't wait. to. I got so much stuff to put in the ground. I've ordered so much stuff, y'all. I'm almost ashamed to say it. All the trees you see around me now, all over my land, I can't even take you to the front. The Wi-Fi might cut off. Everything is blooming. Uh, Dolphins, man, I got to let you go, man. I know what it is, man. See, you going to get me knocked, bruh. You going to get me knocked. That's not legal everywhere, bruh. I get it, but when you just talk like you got to remember, it's not legal everywhere yet, okay? So when they see that on my channel, eyes are on me. Hey, what's up, Turf? What's going on, bruh? All right? Bear, bear with me, man. I'll, if you into that, that's gravy. Some of us, you know, let's put it like this. It's not legal yet. I see a lot of those channels, and I see a lot of them getting raided, and I see a lot of them getting shut down. Ah, man, I don't want... Mm -mm. Okay. 
Uh, what are some tips you suggest for first time? Ooh, okay. I ain't know what that was. I'm glad you caught it. Uh, I wish I could plant some citrus here. You can, I bet, in a container inside the house. Really, I didn't know that. Yeah, man. Come on, Dolphus, man. Look, look, Dolphus. Uh, man, I'm sorry, bro. Bye, Dolphus, man. You, you, you cutting up and I ain't in the mood for that shit. <laughs> I'm gonna be honest with you, man. All right. I mean, I, I gave you several times, and you even know what you said several times. You know, it, put it like this, brother, whoever you are. I had to put you in line several times. If you don't know that you're out of line, I kind of don't want you in here anyway, because you ain't got right good sense. I ain't got time. I, ain't, I got three children, son. You understand me? I got three children. I don't got time to raise another one that I can't even see and reach out to. So you go on about your business, all right? We, we trying to grow food and survive, man. You coming in here with that nonsense, okay? Ain't nothing wrong with having a good time and playing around, but man, you got to understand, man, when you, you come in and you put somebody else in legal jeopardy, that it ain't just disrespectful, man. It's, it's you coming in here with some some legal mumbo jumbo, and you know good and well. If you don't know that it ain't legal everywhere, you ain't got the kind of sense that need to be in the greenhouse lounge. I, I can't deal with a whole bunch of children. If I wanted to go and deal with a bunch of children, I would have went over to TikTok and talk about this grafting. Okay. So that's enough of that. Let me get off of here. Uh, hope somebody learned something. All right. <laughs> I wish I could have answered more questions, y'all. Uh, can I email you pics of my lemon tree? I think I killed it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm in Texas. Can I go ahead and put my pear and fig tree in peace? Yes, definitely. Yes. Uh, hey, Led just got my Miwa sweet kumquat. Reggie Martin said tree got clay soil. Will it grow in zone 7A? Yes, you gotta make the proper arrangements though, okay? You're gonna have to tend your soil a little bit. Yeah, that got that, Tanisha. I ain't got time for that. Any thoughts on a blackberry? What you need to know, crafty mom? If you put it like this, you need blackberries. But I'm gonna be honest with you. Be careful, because wherever you plant that blackberry, you ain't getting rid of it. I have blackberries down. Lemon Lane used to be Blackberry Lane. And it's blackberries all on the ground and you can't even see them when I'm walking through there. I'll never get rid of those. Um, you only got 12 leaves on it. Uh, it'll be fine. I have learned. Thank you so much, Lady Smith. Thank you so much. Uh, what type of banana trees do you grow and how, how do you allow them to survive the winter? Now, remember, I live in the South, okay? So our, our bananas, you see them all brown behind me out by the water. And this guy here, that big monster, it's just going to bounce right back. It look awful, but they all just come right back. And if, if you don't want to do that, dig them up. It's easy to dig them up and take them in the garage. Put them in a pot or put a plastic garbage bag over the root system. Forget about it. I just stopped doing it because them suckers heavy, man. They heavy. Um, let me see. I just bought 30 liter tubs and planted my bare roots. They'll be fine. They'll be just fine. I showed you in a in a clutch. You can just go ahead and throw them in a bucket until you're ready to do something with them. Where you get seeds from? Anywhere. Should I be pruning my blueberry bushes or will they be okay? Um I don't know. I would have to see your, your blueberry bushes. Family, don't go chopping and snatching and stuff on plants and trees just because you think that's what you're supposed to do. That's not what you're supposed to do. You're only supposed to be messing with your tree if it needs attention. If you have branches crossing like this, one of those branches got to go. If one branch is dead, it needs to get cut off. Don't just be going in there. Listen, family. <laughs> These are fruit trees, not hedges. All the stuff we grew up seeing the dude, hey, John, how's it going? He's cutting his bushes. Hey, Bob, how's it going? Nice day, eh? Yep. No. 
No. If your tree does not need attention, leave it alone. If you want longevity of your tree, most of the time, leave it alone. I promise you that. Some people go and they keep cutting on that doggone tree till it's bald as I am. And then they be like, let I ain't getting no fruit. Yeah, you ain't got no tree. What happened to it? I pruned it a little bit. <laughs> this thing was 12 feet tall. You don't have to keep doing everything you see on, on these videos. Let me tell you something, family. Some of the stuff that you see on these videos, they have to make content so they can get paid. You understand? I just so happen to actually have that much stuff to do. But those people that don't have nothing to do, they're making content so they can get paid. Okay? So they're showing you any damn thing they can think of for the day. I got to come up. I got to come up with some kind of idea. I got to show people something. Um, uh, dancing mics. No, we tried that last year. That didn't work. They got to come up with some kind of content. So they're showing you all kind of nonsense and unnecessary. This is what I do every year. I prune my... You don't have to do that. And you know what? You don't even have to believe me on that word. It's just the truth. You don't have... I don't do... Come on. We going on a tour. Dang it. I tried to leave. Y'all did it. Let me show you something. I can walk around all around my land. My land looks awful. My trees look awful. It's not pretty. It's not prepped. It's not pruned. None of it is. I could go all day doing this. It's not beautiful. Leaves all shiny and everything looks even. Nah. Look, can't even tell this is a damn tree at all, can you? That little stick. Containers from Walmart. Pallets everywhere. Family. Look, don't that look like a jerry curl? That look like the thriller video right there. Here go my blueberry patch. Don't look like a blueberry patch. I never show it. Here's my blueberry patch. She's ugly, but she produces mad fruit. You see? What I'm trying to tell you, family, is the stuff that they show you on some of these videos. Look at my land. It's atrocious. It's atrocious. I'm going to keep going. It's atrocious. Containers everywhere. Mud. But in between all of this nonsense that I got laying around. Tools. You know what else you see? Food. These are pear blooms all day. All day. In between the mess is food. Rosemary. Don't look like it, do it. Ain't nobody going to show you this kind of rosemary. They're going to show you this rosemary. That's what those beautiful pomegranates look like when they half dead. Food. Everywhere. I don't want you to get discouraged. I don't want you to get discouraged thinking that everything's supposed to look like them videos. If they got time to make their houses and their land look like that family, that's wonderful. But for the most... Miwa Kumquat. If they have time, I got to get more. If they have time to do that, let them do that. And it's wonderful. 
if they're retired and they got time to make it beautiful. I'm not interested in that. If I want beauty, I look at my wife. There go them blackberries. Look, somebody was talking about blackberries. Just trip me up. See these blackberry vines? All over the place. You'll never get rid of them. Ever. Lemons, oranges, pears, plums, peaches. Look horrible, don't it? Look terrible. But in between the nonsense is food. Blooms on every tree. Food on every tree. It look like crap. But every year I prove to you. Oh, that was the best one yet. You eating. So I don't. I ain't gonna say I don't watch those videos. Because I do. But that don't turn me on y'all. If I was in a competition. Where I'm gonna win a blue ribbon. At the end of the show. Then yeah. I would care. Look at my chicken coop. Nonsense. That's one chicken coop. Trees and containers. Loquats. Persimmons. I don't care about what people think. Look. Old. We're going to go down that way. Old. What is that called? That she loves so much. Okra. Okra. Still ain't out the ground. Fig trees looking like a nightmare. You look out the window at night, that thing look like it's coming to get you right there. See that? Our okra is still up. Sugar cane look like it need a haircut. Why is okra still up, family? Why is okra 15 feet tall? Hot mess. Hot mess. Look at the roots on that okra. See, that's when you know you got you some good soil. Your okra mess around, do that. Your okra turn into a whole tree. So, this is a mulberry cutting that I put in the ground about three years ago. And now look at it. It was only about six inches tall. I brought that from Ohio. So, I'm just telling you, it don't got to be beautiful. It got to be functional. If you eating off of it, stop caring. You, oh, look, here you go. You know why that cardboard down there? Because it's full of chicken poop. From when I was uh, raising my, my little chicks, they pooped all over that thing. Instead of me throwing away, I'm going to let that soak down into the dirt and feed this pecan tree. That's why. My Wi-Fi is actually going all the way out here. I'm proud of myself. Can't tell me nothing, y'all. So. We back out here on the tip of the island. Tip of the iceberg. All right, all right. There we go. So, I was able to actually continent. I guess I can do a tour now. I guess that's coming up. A whole full tour. But it don't got to be beautiful. It got to be functional. We look at stuff. We look at. We look at everything wrong. We even look at each other wrong. How is Benita? I'm about to show her to you in a second. We look at everything wrong. We even look at each other. 
We so busy trying to figure out what the outside look like. We don't even care about the inside. That's why everybody wears so much fake stuff because we're trying to pretend to be something that we're not so you will think that we're this. Nobody care about your insides. Told you. I like I like beautiful people, man. And beautiful people ain't got to, it ain't about your face. Good, good people, good heart, strong, courageous. That's beauty to me. That's why I don't care what my food look like. Y'all see me always eating. Because I know it produces food. And then I've had some people say, look at this garden, look at that. I get it. I ain't never contested it, <laughs> but I don't care. I don't gotta feed them. That's the part you gotta understand. You can't go off of everybody's videos, not even mine. You gotta do your own research. You gotta study yourself, find out what's good for you and your surroundings. Find out what's good for you, right? Be true to yourself, be true to your garden, be true to your friends, family, and your loved ones around you. You really can't eat off land, save my life, keep my health from year after year. Exactly. Exactly you can. I see people keep snipping at trees and like, oh, but this branch is over here all by itself. So what? Full of fruit. I can show you my bald head, um, Red Haven peach tree. It got one little lonely branch out like this. It's like this, like a teacup. It look awful, but it's full of fruit blooms. I was gonna cut it today. Lady Liz said, leave my tree alone. Baby, do you see this thing? <laughs> it needs some help. Leave it alone, okay. Okay, so we've been on here forever, family. I tried to make it quick. Long as I got the good stuff out in the beginning, I'm glad I got that over with. Cause I wanted to show y'all. Um, thank you so much, uh, Jamal. When it's cleaned up, it ain't too shabby. Right now, it's cold, it's soggy, it's muddy. And right, it's the you go girl tree. Yeah, you saw that hand, didn't you? Like it had an attitude. Uh, let me see. It's going to produce the sweetest fruit. Yes, it will. Yes, it will. Uh, show Bonita. Y'all just, just hammering me up. We trying to eat is not a beauty pageant. That's right. That's right. If it is beautiful, you got the time, go for it. If you can make it, listen, because there's a lot of people that's retired, and that's what they do. But that doesn't mean that one garden is better than another one. Here's Bonita. Remember, she was cut down to a knuckle. You see this here? I got a, I got a story behind that. I'm, I'm zoom in on that. It's a story behind that that I ain't told nobody yet. I've been saving it. You see that? That cut? She broke down so far down I almost uh, snatched her soul up out of her. But nope, Lady Led, my baby said, leave her alone. I said, I can't bear to look at her like that, baby. Can't look at her like this. So I didn't know what, I still don't know whether I'm gonna keep her in bush form or cut all of these pieces off and let her grow a central leader again. I'm still, I'm still torn. I'm going to let, I'm going to let the congregation vote on that one. Uh, uh oh, I might let y'all vote on that because she, she, uh, she need a cut so she can produce properly. And I don't think I want her in the bush form like that. Look, like she like, yeah, I, she, uh, she is protected from the beavers. You see the big cage around her. Cages is around every last one of my trees. Everybody said, let her be. Leave her alone. Yep, I'm going to leave her alone. I'm going to leave her alone. 
Yes, my my yard is super dormant. You should see it from a um a drone footage that I just took when I had my camp out here. It's ugly. Uh, you can make bonita babies from cuttings. Yeah, I don't even want to do it. I don't want to do it. Yeah, that she's still my girl. I told you, Rasputia holding it down while Bonita is is in the uh, ICU. So wait, what was that? I might. I'm gonna try. I'm gonna see. I'm gonna see. But I I literally got so many persimmon trees. I'll see what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna see. What is the metal? The metal behind you? That is a dryer drum out of a dryer. That was my big fire pit. It's sitting on the big, we call it the 300 fire pit. And that's just a big metal drum. Everybody was like, what kind of, uh, <laughs> hey, Led, what kind of um, wood burning stove should I buy? What brand? <laughs> Whirlpool? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> it. Some stuff, y'all, it's, it's certain things you don't have to buy. You have to use your common sense. Yeah, it's a, that's what's inside of your washing machine or your dryer. A big metal drum. You ever hear that? Eat, eat, eat. Let you know it's about time for a new washer or a new dryer. That's the metal bearings rubbing on the metal drum about to cause a fire. Somebody had put that out and I grabbed it so I could turn it into a fire pit. Simple. So when I don't want to light the big fire pit, we light the big one when we have family gatherings. But I like that one when me and Lady Led are just sitting out here enjoying the water and this dude ain't blowing the freaking leaves. <laughs> I'm doing a video. You hear the geese coming. See the ducks leaving right there. See, I have one to hold with the holes in the side. Yeah, yeah, it look it do look good at night. The geese sounding uh healthily. Healthy, I bet they're delicious in a pot. You ask them that, they'll tell you. Uh the geese sound oh okay. That's right, upcycle recycle. You can use it to cook and not. I, I we do everything on that thing. And it's so big, I, I usually keep it in the garage. But I pulled it out for the, uh, you know, when I was doing the camp thing. Let me see. Where am I first time here? What are we pruning? My old washer gives my cabin electricity. Okay, Charles. How you doing, my friend? Thank you so much, Annie V. Uh, let me see. Up north, we burn in barrels. Yep, same thing. Yes, we are camping again soon. We are literally camping Saturday night. Saturday night, we're going to be doing our indoor prep party. We are going to be camping, and hopefully, I'm going to see if I can get a Zoom going and just randomly invite people. Uh, do the geese ever try to attack you or your animals? Geese? These ain't Rottweilers, <laughs> okay? They just some geese and ducks. Attack people. Let me see what it's saying. Um, I say Rex my old stone fire pit. Uh, they attack here in New York. Yeah. Listen, I've been in New York. Everything attack you in New York. <laughs> Okay, look, look, come on, pigeons. Okay, that makes sense now. That makes sense. That makes sense. All right, you got you. All you had to do was say, I'm from New York, and I would have been like, oh, okay. That at first I was like, is this a troll? You from New York and wanted to know if the geese attack you. Got you. Been in New York. I almost live in Chicago. I get it now. Nope, these are southern geese. They got manners and they all like polite. They walk by you, blow kisses at you. They, they all right, you know. 
Southern hospitality ducks and geese. Uh, Lovelace, a suggestion to if may you'll save some of those old rags and clothes. You can wrap your wood and burn it. Very true. Uh, let me see. Let's see what we got. No, no, no. You New Yorkers ain't angry. <clears throat> now, I'm a northerner now by by uh right. We ain't we ain't angry. We stay on our guard. So it look like we angry to other people. We never let our guard down, okay? Down here you got fresh open air, space to walk, breathe, ain't nobody around you. So I can now hear and twirl like I'm doing the one of them old gone with the winds or something. In the city, everybody wants your pocket. That bumping into you business, that's a hustle. Okay, that is not an accident. So that's, we're not angry. We just got our guards up. So if you bump into somebody up north and they're like, hey, yo, what's the problem? Look, look, don't kill me. <laughs> Yeah, because he thought, first thing he do is make sure he got his money. All right, man, watch where you going. See? No, it's not rude and mean. Life crazy. It's not rude and mean. You must live down south with me and never been up north. Because usually when people come from out of town or people come from another country and they be looking around like this, Ooh, look how tall that building is. What's that over there? There are people watching you and looking for those motions of people looking up like this. Ooh, ah. They like this. Ooh, ah. Everybody ain't there like you. Everybody everywhere don't like you. So you got to keep your guards up. That's, that's the part. So, right. And, and when you in those tight spaces, you don't know about being around a lot of people like that all the time. Okay. Living down south. Look, look, family. I'm sitting by the lake. The dude is way over there. The next human to me. Look, at, look, this is the kind of land we all have. This is nothing down here. This is nothing. Up north, you can reach out your bathroom window and say, Hey, yo, Bob, man, what you want? Hey, y'all got some tissue over there? Yeah, what's the problem? I'm all out. You Can you give me a roll? Man, all right, man, get my tissue back. You can reach out your bathroom window without getting off the toilet, mind you. He hands you that tissue paper in his building or his house. You take it. Hey, thanks, man. I owe you one. I want my money back. I'm not making that up. And all my northerners here know I'm not lying. That's not even a joke. That's real. That's how close we lived each other. You ever seen cops and people starting to show cops or something and they the criminals is running through the houses. They running from the police, right? And when they go between the house, they do this. Then the police. The police, he right behind. He grab his, his radio and his CB and his gun and, and he shimmy through the house too. That's how close we live to each other. You gotta turn to the side. You ain't gotta be fat. You turn to the side to get through houses. Okay? <laughs> so it's not rude, it's just that's the way it is. Everybody ain't your pal. And usually somebody bump into you, you wanna check for your wallet first and your house keys. Uh, see, yeah, rooftop chases like you running on, running on the ground. That's how close they is. You don't even got to jump high. Look, it's in all the movies. You can see it. And when you see that stuff on like Batman and stuff, that's not miraculous to us. That's just for show. But them running across the roof, we be like, why? Why ain't they just run down 12? Why is they on the buildings? That's so stupid. <laughs> Let me stop. Let me stop. Um, <clears throat> that's just for theatrics. 
Oh, uh, let me see. I'm going to get out of here, y'all. I've been on too long messing, messing with y'all. I'm glad we did the, the good stuff in the beginning, though. That way, if you want to watch it, you know where to cut it off at. Uh, houses on top of each other, exactly. Let's see. Let me, y'all can walk into the house with me. <sighs> I'm so glad my Wi-Fi work. I like this. See this. I guess I can do a tour with y'all now without getting cut off. I think I will. Let me turn this into a little selfie stick. Selfie stick. All my peaches is coming to life. This the best part of the year, family, besides getting the food. Oh, for everybody that was wondering, my blood, my Indian blood peach that I thought I killed, what was that, two years ago? Not only did she come back to life, but she blew up and grew up. You see her? Loaded. Loaded. And I said I wasn't going to put her in the ground until she come back to life. So she's been in that container now for a little over a year. And for everybody that asked about the, uh, the pluot, this is her. This is the one I got, I think it was last year, year before, last year. Pluot from, uh, can't remember where I got it from. Dave, Dave Wilson. See, I heard, I heard that though. Let's go on in the house, y'all. I think I done had enough fun out here. I hope everybody, all my pecan trees. Oh man. See, I don't never get time enough to just come out here. This is one of my oldest peach trees. The Saturn peach that we do every year. This the one that had the wasp on it. Every year. Look at that. None of your trees has bloomed yet. They might not be ready. That's all. Low quats. My friend Garden Love, Diana from Garden Love Homestead. I've been wanting to show me and her bought. She got me to buy low quats. I got four of them. And me and her bought this to this right here. She done grew up and blew up. Diana from Garden Love Channel. That's one of my low quats. Here's the other one. That's the little one. Here go my almond tree. She coming back to life. She took a little beating. This is from Ison's nursery. She took a little beating there for a minute. The sun was tearing her up. She got stressed out. But she waking back up. She coming along strong. We might get some almonds off of her. Lemons. Y'all, this the lemon tree that we covered up and the cover flew away into La La Land. It don't need to be covered up. This is the air layer that we took off of Lillian. She is huge. She tall as I am. That's a beautiful thing. Korean giant pear. About to go crazy with fruit buds. What happened to my tropical oasis area? Tropical trees do not feed you. And when it looks like the apocalypse is coming, something got to give. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So all of the beautiful elephant ears, I still got them, but very few. Here's the Shinko Asian pear. Ready to bloom. Those are fruit buds. Those ain't leaves. 
the Hosui Asian pear fruit buds. One of my favorites, the Orient pear loaded fruit buds all over the place. Fruit buds, fruit buds. Fruit buds, fruit buds. Yeah, that's me. So, Anjou pear, hood pear. I could go on and on and on and on. Let's get out of here. Head down little lane. Man, I'm so glad my Wi-Fi staying on. I'm gonna plant more lemons down here. I got so much stuff waiting. I came down this way on purpose. <laughs> Grab a couple more of these bad boys. Mm. Y'all, let me tell you something. You gotta get a Miwa. This right here, this is Lead Farmer's Choice tree here. If you get this, you're going to like this more than any other citrus trees you have. I promise you. I promise. Because they sweet. You eat the whole thing. And remember, this is just a little baby tree. And it's it keep every time I pick some, y'all see I've been eating them all year. I've been eating them all year. How many videos? How many videos have I done? Well, I just grab a couple handful of these and eat them through the video. Every time I eat some, it grows some more. Even through the cold in the winter. It just keep growing fruit. It ain't got no, it's going to grow in the spring. It's going to grow in the fall. No. It's ever bearing. Come on, y'all think. It's been like that all year. Look at the video. And I'm still eating off of them. All year. They don't stop growing. My favorite citrus tree right there. Mm. Bartlett pear tree. Blooms all over the street. This is another one we grafted. Whole bunch of different pears on this one. Got the Bartlett. Moon Glow, Orient, several kinds of uh, Oriental pears. I got tons of trees, y'all. Y'all just don't know. I could show y'all this all day. I'm going to go in the house. What's the name of your tree? This is the Miwa Kumquat. If you ain't never hunted for no citrus tree before, this is the one. This is my Neo tree. You hear me? The Miwa Sweet Kumquat is Neo. Remember they was waiting on Neo to come save the world or the, get everybody out the matrix. Just the one right here. It's an orange. It tastes like candy. Uh, I heard it's not sweet, is it? No, it's super sweet like candy. You're talking about another kind of kumquat. Listen, Miwa, sweet kumquat. No, I only like the Miwa, sweet kumquat. All them other kumquats, I've had them, and that's why they ain't on my land, because they ain't sweet, they sour, some of them bitter. It's like they for like ori uh, decoration or something. This one, did you see I just ate about 20 of these jokers? I shouldn't be eating this much sugar. That's how sweet they is. I promise you. It tastes like... Some of them so sweet they taste like jam. But it's like... Can you imagine eating an orange peel? The sweet, oh, 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 you know, the candy orange peels, the marmalade, the marmalade with the peels in it, 
the best part of that marmalade is what? Chewing the peel, the sweet peel, because it got the most citrus flavor, but it's sweet. You wish the insider orange tasted like a sweet candy peeling, right? That's what this is. This is like eating jam. So, so, is that the only kind of kumquat you have? That's the only kind of kumquat I want. I mean, really, think about it. I'm going to say this too, family. Since we out here and we done went over the hour. Why, why would you... Why would you want stuff that you don't even like? You understand? The whole thing is edible. The whole inside is sweet, outside is sweet. It's like pulling off a bunch of little apples. Thank you, Jimmy Lee. Thank you, bro. That never stops growing fruit. It's a, it's a fruit tree that never stops growing fruit. It's super sweet. It's super good for you. Vitamin C up the yin-yang. Come on, man. That's Neo. That's his name too, Neo. Family, we got to stop planting trees and stop planting vegetables that you know you ain't going to eat. Somebody said, Led, do you grow eggplant? No, I don't eat eggplant. I don't eat it. You should grow it. Why should I grow it if I'm not going to eat it? Oh, you, you, can, you can give it away. I can give away anything. When you grow a bunch of trees and fruit and vegetables that you don't have no idea what you're about to do with, you're wasting time, wasting energy, you're wasting real estate on your land. You could be growing anything. I don't, my days of growing stuff that I, I don't like is over. I'm not doing it. So once I found one super kumquat, listen, your dream kumquat? It's sweet on the outside, sweet on the inside. It never stops growing fruit. It never goes to sleep. It's what do I need another one for? Now I can see getting another one of that exact same one. I'm gonna clone that. But I don't want I don't want no other kind. I found the one. The love of the love of your life. You know, you find the love of your life. Okay, I can stop looking. That's that's I can stop looking. For citrus right there right the, the gummy is sour the, the inside is sour and the peel is sweet and they're expensive uh so it's not that expensive i missed something was it was it called again a me just just type in sweet kumquat and the miwa is going to pop up sweet kumquat how do you grow them? Like you grow any other citrus. Yes, thank you for typing that out, y'all. Go anywhere you can go to find it. All trees take years to bear. Right. Don't be trying to get no fruit out of it too soon. I did that video last year. Remember that? That thing was a twig. And it's, I put, as soon as I put it in the ground, it went nuts. Any experience with pawpaws? I have three, but I, I don't have experience with them. I, they're literally in my driveway in pots. Uh, where did you get that one from? You know what? I don't know. I've had it that long. It's been in a container. Matter of fact, look, this the container that it was in. It's been in this container for years. You see that clay pot? Oh, I can't zoom it out, y'all. Oh, there it go. You see that clay pot right there on the side of my greenhouse? Right here? It was in that pot for years. It was in that pot for years. I never messed with it. It was just lanky. It had fruit, a little bit of fruit. But as soon as I put it in the ground, it went ape. How you doing, Barbara Jones? To any ideas on how to amend clay soil you just keep dumping organic for yeah and really this is how i amend my soil look since we out here and we playing now show you how i amend my soil my soil is terrible
So I do everything in my power to try to build it up. See that? It's nothing more than a big pile of ground up leaves. I run it over with my lawnmower and it soon turns to soil. You put that on top of your clay soil. Don't try to mix it in. Just keep setting it on top like that. Every year. Every year. Look, look how tall this is. See that? And this is going to keep mashing down until it's just dark, black, rich soil. That's all soil is, is leaves and minerals. Dead organic material. So, that's all you do. Mulch, wood chips, that's, that's all you do. Simple. Like I say, most of the stuff that you do, all, most of this stuff, is simple solutions. And folks want you to think that you got to do all this crazy stuff. Uh, let's see. Can a Miwok kumquat tree be planted in a pot? Yep, I told you, I have mine in a pot for years. What's my favorite nursery? Ison's. Ison's Nursery. I-S-O-N-S. -S, nursery and Vineyard. Because you know what? Let, let me say something. Because everybody think these folks are paying me. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. Um, I just like going places where the quality is right and things work. Okay, that's what I like. I had to call, and I I call people out when I need to. I had to call Stark Brothers today, and I'm gonna tell you what I don't like. They starting to they starting to act like couple of these ones I don't bother with. Let me tell you something, family. When you start a business, now I'm, I'm talking from a business owner. When you start a business, you need to be concentrating on one thing. I don't care what the rest of the world is doing. If you're to be successful, there's two things you need to do all ways no matter how long your company has been around for decades whatever two basic things that your company need to ride on and never drop these two rules quality and customer service quality and customer service right now even that has a catch 22 because you know what overrides that? You could have the best quality in the world. Customer service overrides quality. I don't give a damn how great your product is. If the person selling it to me sucks, I don't want to deal with you. I don't care how great your quality is because your quality is great, but your company's ethics are wrong, which may, I don't want to support that. And over the last three years, you know, I, I was a ride or die Stark Brothers, ride or die. But over about the last three years, I've been noticing something and you guys been noticing it too. And you've been emailing me about it. And I keep trying to be like, well, uh, I don't know what's going on. And I reached out to them and asked them, hey, yo, what's going on? They ain't telling me nothing, right? So <clears throat> they've been doing stuff like they keep pushing your date back, keep pushing your date back, keep pushing your date back for your product that you've already purchased. Now, they didn't used to have, they didn't used to take your money until you get your product. But now they take your money first. And they say, if it's going to be... It's, I have a tree that was supposed to be given to me in October. They kept pushing it back. They kept pushing it back. And I'm like, okay, I understand things is going on. I understand the world ain't right. But this was happening before the pandemic, okay? 
kept calling, kept, and I have it on, I have it uh, logged on their website and my screenshots of, listen, y'all doing me a little dirty here to the point where I'm checking them out, checking them out, checking them out. October, November, December, and I said, I'm going to leave them alone because I understand things are ugly right now. But now they talk about, okay, it's going to be here the 1st of February, and then the end of February, the end of week of February 25th, they said. And I'm looking out the window on the same day it was supposed to arrive, the end of March. So I called them today, this today. Like, yo, listen, come on, what's going on? You can at least email me and tell me what's going on. But man, you got a lot of my money in your pocket. I need to know what's going on. You understand? You owe me. You you literally owe me that. I paid for you to tell me, man, something is wrong. And then sometime, you know what they'll do? They'll push you for months, for months, for months. Push it back, push it back, push it back. And then just drop your... They didn't tell you they dropped it or nothing. You will see, damn, I got an extra $60 in my bank account. Wonder where that came from. Mm-hmm. Then you be wondering where your tree is. You look and log on your account. And it be like, yeah, refund it. They don't know. This stuff is important to us gardeners. We ain't just no uh, fly-by-night people. Don't, don't. I know some of these people supply um, big farms. You got to remember something. You can't pee on the little guy, though. Because your biggest supplier, I mean, your biggest demand is the farmers. Don't forget how you got there. Don't forget how you got those farm contracts. The little guys, once upon a time, was the ones telling the farmers, you need to go through these guys. They're great. Because big corporations and big farms, they close down. That little guy is going to always be there that only want two or three different trees to keep your doggone lights on in your building. So... Stark Brothers, tighten that up, man. I, I, Y'all got great quality, but the last three years of this customer service, I choose to do my business elsewhere. I even said this about might be the last tree. I don't want to bite my tongue, but I'm telling you, one thing I don't like, I don't like spending my money and I don't like somebody spitting on me and telling me I got to take that because I bought something from I'd rather not have nothing at all. Uh, you say you've been waiting on your, your order for two months? For months? Yeah, me too. And I feel like this. You got my email. You can send a group email and say, listen, stuff is being pushed back due to the situation at hand. You can tell people anything. Don't hang on to a man dollar and don't tell him nothing. That's like somebody owe you some money. And you see them at the club, and they, they sipping on top shelf. Uh, because you keep on sending me emails of what I should come to your shop and, and buy from you. You keep sending me emails of what's on sale right now. And what hurts my feelings is you just sent me an email that said, guess what's on sale? The orange pippin' apple. It is, huh? Wish I had mine to know anything about it. That's what made me call like, all right, enough is enough. Come on, man. All you got, it don't take nothing to call somebody. I'm sounding like somebody, mom and daddy now. Look, you could have called the house. But dad, I was, I, I don't give me that. It take two seconds to call the house. Tell me where you at. Tell me you all right. So uh, you ain't going to be going nowhere for at least 90 days. <laughs> okay, so yeah, until you learn how to call people, you you going on up in the room, you hang out. I uh, say, so yeah, they drop ship me something from someone else and charged me for two years old trees, but the tag said they were eleven months. I don't oh, I don't know nothing about that one. Uh. Love knows, yeah, they just pushed my date back. They kept, they keep doing it. And I told them, listen, I'd rather give my business to somebody I know going to take care of me. Simple. I would take a lesser quality and have to work a little harder to get the tree up and going than deal with horrible 
customer service. Especially now. So, when people keep asking me why I go to Ison's Nursery, that's why. Because I keep showing y'all the quality. Look, the quality is right here in our face. Look at this. Look at this. Here's the quality. Quality. Now, I'm paying the same amount for these big giant trees in these pots you're looking at here. In these pots, all three of them, this big giant persimmon. That, look, this is a persimmon. This ain't like what you can get at the big box store. And these two is, um, um, not, what is they? Lee and Lang, uh, good God. I can't think of it right this second. You know what I'm talking about. Jujubes. When you giving me that kind of quality and that kind of customer service, and I keep getting updated emails like your stuff is coming, your stuff is on your way, hold tight, you getting it, it's on its way. Even if you keep on saying you pushing it back, but you let me know something going on, I get it. The world is in trouble. I get it. A lot of people can't staff their businesses right now because it's just so much trouble. I get it. But tell me something. Don't just have my money and just be like, Psh. you know. Uh, propane gas companies are the same way right now. They don't drop a count in anything husband won't go through. But you know, some stuff I understand because the world is tripping, but some stuff, man, some stuff you can't substitute. Waiting for my pomegranate tree. Yeah, they ain't released yet. You know, I bought that last year. Uh, my chicken coming a bit. Your chicken coming? You bought some chickens through the mail? Mail, mail order chicks. <laughs> I'm sorry. That was so corny. That was so corny. But that what went through my head. Mail order chicks. <laughs> sorry. And for, for YouTube, don't block me. We talk about chicks, like baby chicks, chickens. <sighs> so, yeah. <laughs> I'm going to get out of here, y'all. I'm going on in the house on that note. Everybody have a wonderful night, okay? Uh, y'all be safe out there. A lot of crazy stuff going on. But I want to show you something before I go. And these bats. They freak me out. But I want to show you something. Can you see the color of my skin changing right now? It's like I'm turning red. That's what I get to look at. Not the chickens. Not them freaks. Not my mail order chicks. Look out there. Ducks flying by. This is what up uh, bats flying by, freaking me out. Y'all have a good night, all right? Sunset, man, this is beautiful. I got, I got to do something so I ain't got to work for nobody else no more. I need to work for myself so I can enjoy this every day of my life. Y'all have a wonderful night. Mail order chicks. <laughs> Get them while they hide. <laughs> Get them while they hide. And spicy. <laughs>